John guys and today we're talking about the Team Black Sheep Crossfire Micro TX version 2. Check this thing out. Um, long has the Micro TX been out of stock. These things have been more rare. People have been fighting over these things more than Tickle Me Omo at Christmas. And people have really been trying to get this, the V1. And now we know the reason because they were in development secretly of the V2. And hopefully these will be a lot more plentiful now. Now, Team Black Sheep recently reduced the price of Crossfire receivers across the board, bringing them into price parity with the R9 system. And given the fact that both of them are the same price, who would choose R9 over this? Who would choose FR Sky for anything these days. They've proven to be super scummy. They're the scumbag Steve of the FPV world. I mean, come on, let's just call it what it is. So what are the major changes on this thing? This is a system that you want. So if you have pre-ordered, if you ordered, we'll go over on the bench some of the physical differences on the casing of this, but it mostly looks pretty much identical. Comes in this pretty cool box comes with the mod chip. If you have a QX7, this will allow you to um, do that little mod. It comes with this little card that I'm probably never gonna read. But most importantly, it comes with this sucker right here. The Team Black Sheep Crossfire Micro V2. Now here is the V1, so let's see side by side if there are any differences. It looks like the case is actually pretty much identical, except for the fact that the new one has USB-C versus USB micro. This one kind of goes inwards on the port. This one actually sticks outwards on the port. Um, now, if you want to see what the actual boards on the inside look like, go and watch Liwu, Liwu, skip to my Liwu. I don't know what the hell that guy's name is, but go watch his video. He does a really good job taking apart this thing. If we look to the back, you can see that this has an FCC um, little rating on here. So that is FCC certified. This one has an extra little connector at the top that is no longer there. Um, this one actually has an extra connector at the bottom that's also no longer there. So now you only have this little port here on the rear. Now, a lot of people are making a big deal on this thing. Well, Trappy explained in the stream that this is simply to get around FCC requirements. So in order for this thing to be FCC certified, it has to meet two requirements. One of the requirements is that you either use RPSMA or if you use SMA, then this has to be enclosed in the casing. So they added this part so that it would be enclosed, but if you have an M1.5 driver, you can just take that off and you can remove it if you wanted to switch out to the larger diamond antenna for a little bit better reception. So this really is not a major change at all. And that actually gives us a hint as to why DJI went with RPSMA, probably for that same guideline. But since Team Black Sheep are in this community, they know that we all use SMA. They decided to foot the bill, kept the price of this thing the same as the original version and did it this way. And people are speculating. Now they haven't said on the live stream what the power output difference is gonna be. Come on, let us know what it's gonna be. But just the fact that they're being very secretive and the fact that they have iterated multiple times, this is a true V2. So it's not just changing of a port, it's not just a slight change of the case design, it's not just a change of the antenna because if you got a recent one, you already got this antenna. Wi-Fi is already capable on this thing, so what does that leave? Power. Power. Power output is gonna be changed on this thing. Now we know that you could have had a firmware update that made the original one 250 milliwatts, so it's likely to be 250 milliwatts out of the box, or it could be 500 milliwatts. I'm kind of thinking 500. I'll put in the description below if that was the case or not once they finally announce this. Either way, 
If you have one of these, you know, we'll try to decide if it's worth upgrading. I think if you truly want to do long, long range, you're going to want the full module anyway. Um, this is the new one. So if you're going to go ahead and buy it, go ahead and get this one. If you have this one, you're probably still perfectly awesomely good with this. Or if you have a Tango 2, you don't really need either one of these. Now, the module that's inside the Tango 2 is the board and the original V1. That was stated last night. Maybe eventually they'll switch over to this. So if you have this, you're perfectly on par with the technology that's in the Tango 1, which is still extremely awesome. I don't think you necessarily need to upgrade. But if you're a first time Crossfire user, there's no better time to buy. And if you think you're gonna switch, go ahead and try to buy up as many receivers as you can. They're gonna be going out of stock if they aren't already. Because anytime a new Crossfire product comes out, a lot of people jump on board of the system and what happens when people switch over, they have to switch out all their quads. And if you're like me and you have like 30 of them, that's a lot of receivers you gotta try to come by. And everyone's gonna be, you know, people are gonna buy one module, but they're gonna buy five receivers, three receivers, 10 receivers, 20 receivers. So <laughs> don't forget if you are gonna switch this, if you are gonna pre-order it, pre-order is available at a couple of the shops in the link's description below. They will ship within the next few days. So go ahead and get your order in now and add as many receivers as you can. What are you gonna be doing? Is this the key for you to finally switch over to Crossfire? I don't think anyone should really be left on FR Sky. The radio releases are just absolutely abysmal. I've really been enjoying this Jumper T18 Pro, but I'm probably gonna sell it and either get, just stake with the original Jumper or maybe the TX16S. I also ordered another Tango too because I wanted to test it some more. I just can't seem to decide on a radio, but now that it's a down season for Multi-GP for the most part, uh, it's a good time to be testing equipment during this year.